Here are three ways you can use Photoshop's AI generative fill tool in your next video edit. Maybe you just wanna change the location you're in like this. Or maybe you want some limitless zoom capabilities like this. Hey, I'm over here. Or maybe you wanna do something as simple as turning your horizontal clips into something vertical for social media like this. Now, whatever your need is, I'm here to explain it to you. So let's talk about it. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is download Photoshop Beta as the AI generative fill tool is currently only available in Photoshop Beta. To download it, go to your Creative Cloud dashboard, look for the Beta Apps tab and click Download Photoshop Beta. Now, once that's installed, we're ready to get started with method one. But first, it's worth noting that this effect works best with footage filmed on a tripod, so keep that in mind. Method one, changing location. Import your clip of choice into a Premiere Pro sequence. Bring your playhead to the moment in your timeline you want the location change to take place. If you want it to be the entire clip, then leave your playhead at the start of your timeline. Hit this export frame camera icon and save the image as a TIFF file. Now open that saved TIFF file in Photoshop Beta. Select the left side of your image using the rectangle marquee tool. Then simply enter your prompt and hit generate. Filter through your results until you're happy, then repeat this process with the right side of the frame. Additionally, we can use the lasso tool to make selections that are a little more custom, and we can use it to add individual items to our scene. Now save your photo as a Photoshop PSD file. Import that Photoshop file into your Premiere Pro timeline on the layer above your raw footage and stretch out the length as needed. Now with the PSD layer selected, go up to your effects controls and under opacity, select the pen tool. Then create a mask around your subject like so, making sure to avoid anywhere the subject may overlap with the mask. Then increase your mask feather to blend the two images together seamlessly. Now hit invert to invert the mask selection. Now we're left with the outside of the frame as our AI generated image and our subject mask nicely in the middle. Finally, we can nest these two clips together and animate them as if they were just one clip. Also, it's worth mentioning that since we import our Photoshop files directly, we can open up those AI generations back in Photoshop, update them, save the results, and it will automatically update in your Premiere Pro project. Pretty fucking cool, eh? Up next, we have method two, the limitless zoom. Similarly to method one, we'll hit export frame on our timeline where we want the effect to take place. Now we can open that exported frame in Photoshop beta and select the crop tool. From here, we can double the size of our sequence. It helps to click and drag until your reference frame fits perfectly within the top center square of our composition lines like so, and then reposition it so it's directly in the center. Now using your rectangle marquee tool, select the majority of your image, leaving a slight border unselected around your entire image like so. Now in the generative fill menu, hit invert selection. Hit generative fill, add the prompt, extend the landscape, then hit generate. Now again, choose your favorite results before saving it as a Photoshop PSD file. Import that PSD file into your Premiere Pro timeline, again on the layer above our original footage. And you guessed it, stretch it out to the length needed. Now the PSD file should line up properly with the framing of your raw clip. Set both the original clip and our AI generation to 50% scale, and again, make sure they line up perfectly. If you need, set the opacity on your top layer to 50% so you can see both of them while you're trying to line them up. Now with our top layer selected, we can use our opacity pen tool to create a mask around our subject like we did in method one. Hit invert to invert the mask selection and increase the mask feather as needed. Next, we can nest both clips together and animate our scale and position to take our framing from what it was originally and zoom out limitlessly. Am I blowing your mind yet or what? what? Now, while I have you here, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Bravite. If you're looking for a quality backpack that won't be too bulky to travel with, then look no further. I've been loving mine so far, and if you're in the market for a new backpack, then make sure to check out the link in the description or go to bravite.co to see their entire collection. Method three, horizontal to vertical for social media. Just like our first two methods, we're gonna start by exporting a frame from our timeline in Premiere Pro. Then open that exported frame in Photoshop beta. Using the crop tool, we're gonna crop our canvas to nine by 16 vertical dimensions. Now center our reference frame like this. With our rectangle marquee tool, we can select the empty top portion of our frame. Hit generative fill, add a prompt like extend the sky and hit generate. Pick your favorite results, then repeat this process on the empty bottom section of the frame. Once happy with our results, we can save that as a PSD file and re-import it into Premiere Pro on the layer above our original footage. Now set up a vertical nine by 16 sequence in Premiere Pro and fit our exported frame 
to the center like this. And then repeat our masking and nesting steps from method one and two, and we're all set. And there we have it, folks, three new ways you can use the AI generative fill tool on your next video edit. So with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace.